What's up guys, let's talk about the pros and cons of Black Ops 6. Leading to, is it worth the money I spent? Starting off with the main topic of the entire game that is going to be Omni Movement. My first impression is that it's very good, it's smooth, and it can really create a skill gap. But it does have some cons that we have to address later. For the most part, I'm loving it and it is a great addition to the game. But it is not necessary to be the best or to be the best of players. Visual recoil is always something that can make or break a game, but with Black Ops 6, the visual recoil is actually really consistent, and it is not as jarring as it has been in the past beta releases. This allows me to get off the same kind of shots that a mouse and key player can, while also maintaining a required skill level for some guns that are due to be overpowered in the future, leading us to time to kill. While it may be fast, it is very similar to Black Ops 2. Most people during Black Ops 2 say it was too fast, but hear me out. With everyone sliding and diving around in all directions, if the TTK was any slower, then players would just be running circles around you as you do a mag dump. More of movement things I am very fond of are the auto mantle. It is pretty nice if you are going to be playing mostly multiplayer, allowing for easy map navigation, although I will recommend turning this off if you are going to be a Warzone player, because it could cause you to leap to your death in the future and that would be very rage engaging. Auto lean is also a very nice feature that should have been in this game all along. This is great for jiggle peeking because it is so much better than just jumping around a corner and losing all aim. Footsteps. Those have always been a big issue in beta releases, but it's not too bad in this one. I'm sure that there's going to be more balancing in the future before this game is released. But until then, I recommend you looking at my settings video that's going to be tagged in this one for all your best audio, visual, and movement settings changing over to maps before we wrap this up with a miscellaneous list of other good things. I personally like the bland colors. I understand this can be a topic of debate, but hear me out. Characters really pop out much better when you don't have all those darker vibrant colors. This allows for a much better design overall and also allows more time for the devs to put love into the map to clear up the glitch spots or dead zones. Rapid fire stuff includes loadout. Moving to a vertical format, we all appreciate that. It's much easier to navigate during the game and you are less likely to get lost in the never ending sea of attachments. The best play system actually seems to work and shows very good worthy plays 90% of the time. I like it much more than just the final typical kill, which is usually just some rat hiding in a corner that just decided to pop out. Even though I chose default for the HUD customization, I really like how they gave us the ability to change it and move it any way we want. I will be messing with this a lot whenever Warzone gets the integration because I am all about I travel time. I did not make a single custom gun, I only used the default or, pre or the pre-built. I have to say the flinch is actually not bad in this game. This, this makes gunfights much more even and it's not just about who lands the first shot. The after action report is very detailed, well put together, and they could have put your KD right in the front page, but we can get over that. Automatic weapon save is also a big W in my book. We could have done without it as long as they gave us at least 5 save slots per gun. I also like how you get credit for shooting down score streaks even if you didn't get the final shot on it. Let's pause for just a second to make sure you like the video if you're actually getting value and hit that follow button for the future tips and tricks of Black Ops 6 and good gameplay. Now let's talk about how they allowed you to carry a knife anytime you want. That is really cool and I hope this is in Warzone along with my number one complaint I have on the cons list because these two combined could boost our rotation speeds. So let's start with the cons list. The cons list is a little bit smaller than the pros list just because they actually done very well in this game. But let's start off with tax sprint. I really couldn't tell too much of a difference between my regular sprint and tax sprint. With that being said, either is in need of a buff or it's time to give it up altogether. With Omni Movement, I see a buff being overpowered, but on the same hand, if you remove it, I actually don't think it would hurt the gameplay that much in my opinion. Something I did not think would be an issue, but seems to be, is the streaks. Not only do the animations take too long, it also leaves you as a target because you are just standing there most of the time and they also cost too much. I understand this is the beta and Activision wants more gunplay, so they're probably more expensive just in the beta to promote that. While the actual Omni movement is smooth, I do think the visual side of it could use some work. 
I do not get motion sickness, but average Joe's, this could trigger some motion sickness. I know it's not a frame issue or a screen tear issue. Staying on the visual side, I think the kill cam needs some major work. I think it should be static and track the player and not just the body as a whole. Human shield mechanic. This is a lot of fun. It's going to create a bunch of awesome clips, although they should allow the captive to mash the button for five seconds to be let free. Once they let free, there is an animation where they should push them off and both players get the weapons at the same exact time, so it's even. I don't think you should be able to hold someone for 10 seconds because this is just going to cause a lot of people to rage quit. And with that being said, that's going to cause disband of lobbies. Kills should not be split. It should also not be the last bullet. This leads to false kill records and improper scoring. The kill should be to the player whom done the most damage. Something else that should be in the game across the board, not just ranked, is some form of punishment for leaving the game early. Like the players put in a timeout, lose some rank, or they lock the gun that they are currently working on. This is not fair to other players who stick around for the good and the bad. Spawns also seem like they could use some work because sometimes people were spawning behind me or I was spawning behind other players. This will also be fixed in the future. Connection. It seems to be very inconsistent. I play on true one gigabyte speeds and even I had issues. I do think it has something to do with skill based matchmaking and also the fact that players will often drop out of the lobbies. Good players can adapt to ping but not if it is inconsistent. This also goes on the list of things that I think will be fixed at the full launch. Since we did mention skill based matchmaking, let me say most people are complaining. I like skill based matchmaking personally because it made me such a good player that I am today. I will agree you should not have to give up connection just get into a lobby with players at your skill level. If there's not enough players to go around at the skill level, you should be prioritizing ping and connection. A couple more things, slide and dive should both have their own buttons if a player chooses. This would bring a whole new level to Call of Duty gunfights. Now I've seen some people complain about the fact that people can lay on their back and shoot, although people are go prone, so rolling over to shoot shouldn't be that much of an issue. The whole purpose of going prone is to make yourself less noticeable. I would say it's working 100% as intended. Either you're upright, fast, and mobile, or you're prone, stealth, and immobile. There are no changes that need to be made here, although they could get rid of the dead bodies much sooner so it's less confusing. To finish this off, I want to say I did buy the Black Ops 6 that cost over $100 and I am fully satisfied. I think overall this is a very great release with more pros than cons, and I cannot wait to see the micro changes that they adapt. I fully support the purchase of Black Ops 6. Just keep in mind, you can get the cheaper version if you like, since all I really got is some extra skins and guns, etc. Like this video if it helped, and I will see you in the next one.